to the Oscars in Spotlight, the film about the Boston Globe's uncovering of the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal and the power of survivors. Until after midnight, the highlight of the night for me was this, Globe Spotlight team reporter Mike Resendez getting a mention from Chris Rock, another cutaway shot, and of course, appearing on stage for the big win. But then this was the moment after the Best Picture Oscar was announced that touched virtually everyone. This film gave a voice to survivors and this Oscar amplifies that voice, which we hope will become a choir that will resonate all the way to the Vatican. That was perfect. Joining me now are men whose work was at the center of the movie, Mike Resendez, just back from L.A. Mike, congratulations, good to see you. Mitchell Garabedian, you know, the attorney who represented many of the survivors of abuse by the church, as well as other sex abuse survivors around the world. Mitchell, congratulations, good to see you. you too. How surreal was that whole scene? Well, it was very surreal. I mean, none of us on the Spotlight team ever thought our work would become a movie, and we certainly never thought we'd be in Los Angeles at the Academy Awards, that's for sure. And you've been, but you've been, it's pretty clear from what I've read and seen, you've become friends with these people. I mean, essentially, there's no, uh, there's no gradation of relationship. You're friends. Yeah, we're pals. I mean, we spent so much time together. Uh, Tom uh, McCarthy, Josh Singer, they consulted with us to write the script. The actors consulted with us. The set designer consulted with us. The distributors consulted with us. We spent quite a lot of time with them, and we've enjoyed their company. And I didn't even notice that Rachel McAdam had her arm around you at the, uh, up on the stage. <laughs> you know, I was really worried, knowing you as I do, that you weren't even going to watch this thing. I was so relieved when I read the next day that you were. What was it like when that moment came at 12-something, Mitchell Garabedian, after was, all these years? I was clapping until my hands hurt. And why? I was alone. I stood up. And I just started clapping, and my hands were hurting, and I kept on clapping. I was so proud of the Spotlight team, so proud of the victims, so proud of survivors. It was their moment, it was their time, and there was a great big voice in the room. And that's really why I wanted you both here to talk about the impact of this, not so much about the movie. Let's start with you. What's the impact uh, on your world, on survivors, that uh, you were doing 24-7? People, uh, survivors are coming forward who have never come forward before. This week, two individuals in their 70s and one in their 80s contacted me, in addition to other survivors, from Idaho, from Iowa, from Cambridge, Massachusetts. It's a new voice, it's a new day, it's a new dawn. Emboldened by what they saw and the recognition that they got Sunday night, is that yes, where it's coming from? Yes, as a result of seeing, spot, the, the, seeing the, the Oscars, as a result of seeing the movie and the Oscars, and this topic being in the news constantly, they now feel empowered. Okay, and on your end, I mean, print journalism is under attack virtually everywhere you go. I mean, obviously, there are financial issues. A lot of my talk radio bloviating friends say, we don't even need the newspapers, we'll do our own research. And then all of a sudden, people see what the real world is like of reporting. What impact? Can you discern this early? What kind of impact this is all having? Well, one of the reasons I love the movie is it shows people how important investigative reporting is. I mean, journalism is in crisis. I don't think democracy can survive without journalism. And I'm hoping the movie inspires editors to not fire their investigative reporters, and I'm hoping it inspires young people to get into journalism. I rushed back from Los Angeles to give a talk at BU. You're a BU grad. I'm a BU grad. Yeah. I went back to my alma mater. I was told there'd be about 200 people there, mostly students. And my talk was delayed by a half hour because 600 kids uh, showed up to watch the speech. They had to bring in more chairs. They opened up the balcony. And it was a tremendous crowd. Uh, the questions were fantastic. And I really did get the sense there were a lot of young people in the room who were inspired to go out and commit journalism, find the truth, and uh, deliver what they find to citizens. And the best part of this to me as an observer of your work is there was no glamour. There was no, the, the, nobody who made this movie tried to make what you do for a living glamorous and clearly not what you do, but they showed the grunt, hard, relentless work you gotta do to produce the product you did. That's the genius of the movie. They showed the tedium and drudgery and made it inspiring. Exactly, exactly. I wanna uh, go to the other side of this thing. Uh, uh, the uh, Cardinal here uh, made a statement about this. I wanna get your reaction to it. The media led the church to acknowledge the crimes and sins of its personnel and to begin to address its failings, the harm done to victims, and their families and the needs of survivors. The media's role in revealing the sexual abuse crisis opened a door through which the church has walked in responding to the needs of survivors. Have they done that walking, Mitchell Garbedian? Not an inch. 
They have not done any walking whatsoever. They're scrutin scrutinizing cases more than ever. Where have they been for the last 50 or 60 years? My oldest case is 1938. A man was abused from 1938 to 1940. Where have they been? This, this is a decades, centuries old problem. Uh, Cardinal O'Malley was the cleanup man in Florida. He was the cleanup man in Fall River. He's the cleanup man in Boston. Why not speak out Cardinal O'Malley 25 years ago? Well, someone who did speak out, which is incredible timing, uh, the exact same day that the picture that portrays both of you won the highest award in the industry, this Cardinal Pell, this Australian Cardinal, is testifying from the Vatican and says that one of the most notorious sex abuse cases ever, I would argue, on his watch, quote, wasn't of much interest to him. How can he say this in 2016 about what happened decades ago? How can he say this? Uh, you're dealing with an entity that acts through secrecy, that is very powerful, very influential, and they think they control the world. What's your take on what this means for survivors? He deals with them every day, but you've dealt with them in, in a different and important kind of way too, Mike Resendez. Well, first of all, I think the movie validates the stories of the victims. Uh, I think uh, the victims and the survivors, they were ignored for so long, for so many decades, centuries, and now their story is being told, and I think that's incredibly empowering. I think at the same time, they're emboldened to say how frustrated they are with the lack of progress at the Vatican. You know, Cardinal O'Malley, uh, to give him his due, I think he's taken some significant measures to prevent clergy sexual abuse in the future. Uh, but at the Vatican, the pace of reform seems to be glacial. It's already been two years since Pope Francis established this commission to study clergy Run sex abuse. Run by O'Malley. Headed by O'Malley. And I think the survivors are saying, hey, look, uh, it's 15 years since the Globe published its stories. Let's have some action. Let's, let's get over the studying part and get into the action part. Speaking of action, quickly, that, that beautiful uh, acceptance speech by one of the producers of the film, does that have any impact on the Vatican? He mentioned the Vatican specifically, or are they just immune to all this? I, I think the Vatican has been basically si silent about this whole matter, except for a few PR bites. And I think that's the measure of how strong this movie really is, the, the, the strength of the, the message in the movie. I hope you're both right. And beyond the movie, the two of you and your colleagues changed the world. And it's great to sit down with you. Mike Resendez, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Mitchell Garabini. Thank you. Great to see Thank you again.